So we should finish some tasks that we started yesterday. So from yesterday. So there were two things to do. So A and then draw consequences from these two things. A, we had to check that the splitting field over FP of this polynomial. So the splitting field has exactly P power N elements. And the second task uh, was the following. Um, is that uh, for any finite field with p to the n elements, it happens that uh, f is a splitting field for the same polynomial. Okay. So these were the two tasks that uh, we, we, we left uh, to do today. And, um, and then we drew some uh, consequences. The consequences that um, being the splitting field um, unique up to isomorphisms, and, and we, we saw it uh, uh, explained very well today in the lectures, in the first lecture from Hinda. Okay, she, she did um, uh, the theory of splitting fields uh, extensively and uh, neatly. So now we know that uh, the splitting field exists and it's unique. So since every finite field is a splitting field, given two finite fields with the same number of elements, they're isomorphic. So the consequence one, consequence one is that um, two finite fields are isomorphic if and only if they have the same number of elements. And, and this is, of course, assumed to be finite. So this is the first consequence. And then we will draw more consequences. And um, so, let's, uh, so let's prove A. So this is... Uh, all this stuff is kind of simple, but uh, you need to say something. So, so you need. Um, so let's call S the set of um, roots. So alpha, which are elements of the splitting field. Alpha is a root of uh, the polynomial x p power n minus x. So this is of course a subset of the, of the splitting field itself, right? So what we know about this S is that, uh, so by definition of splitting field, in here, this polynomial has all its roots. And the roots are um, as many as its degree. Well, it could happen that some of them coincide, but if um, two roots coincide, it means they are multiple. If, and if it's a root is multiple, then will be a root in common with the derivative of the polynomial. But the derivative of uh, this polynomial is the constant polynomial minus one, so there's nothing that can be in common between this polynomial, it's its derivative. So the roots, of um, this polynomial inside the splitting field, they're all distinct. And so the cardinality of S is exactly P to the N. Okay? And so, as I just said, since all roots are distinct, because the derivative of this polynomial is minus one. Okay? So, what I claim, I claim the following, that S is itself a field. So, 
if S is itself a field, being the splitting field, uh, can the, the smallest field in which this polynomial has these roots, what we can deduce, what this is going to have as consequence, is that this is actually an equality. Right? So if this is a field, this is a field, but this is minimal with respect to the property that it contains all the roots. So these two have to be equal. And so, since they're equal, they have to have um, the same cardinality. Okay? So this will imply that um, the cardinality of the splitting field equals to the cardinality of S and equals to P power N. Okay? So, uh, S is a field because whenever you choose alpha and beta in S, so suppose beta is different from zero, then if you do alpha times beta to the minus one, to the power of p to the n. This is alpha to the p to the n times beta to the p to the n to the minus 1. And uh, so since this is a root, this is alpha. Since this is a root, this is beta. And so this is it. So which implies that alpha times beta to the minus 1 is in S. And very similarly, because of the wrong formula, if you do this, this is alpha plus or minus beta p to the n, p to the n. And this is alpha plus or minus beta. So alpha plus or minus beta is in S. And so S, S is a field. OK, so this is the proof of A. And for what concerns the proof of B, so you want to prove that this is a splitting field with this. So this at least has p to the n elements. So its cardinality is the correct one, right? Because we just proven that uh, the splitting field of this has p to the n elements. So at least we know that this has the correct size, right? So for that, it is enough to show that x power p to the n minus x splits in f. So, or that for every beta in f, beta to the p to the power of n is equal to beta. So that the p to the n elements of f, they're all roots of this. Uh, but, but this is very simple, because uh, this is certainly true if uh, beta is equal to 0, right? Because it's 0 equal to 0. And uh, if uh, beta is different from 0, then uh, what happens is that when you take beta, you raise it to the power of b, p to the n minus 1, this is certainly 1, OK? Which is the, the general rule that uh, if you take an element, you raise it to the group order, you get the identity, right? So this rule applies here. And so from this, you just multiply by b, and you get what you, what you want. So that's done. So this is the proof of B, right? So this finishes what uh, we wanted to prove uh, yesterday.
But now, incidentally, we have also met uh, several other interesting facts. Okay, so for example, so so if we take any of this field that uh, I mean the name is controversial, but uh, I like to call them STEM fields. So if uh, we have um, a STEM field, so this is FP uh, of alpha, and F, which is the stem of alpha, is equal to zero. And um, so F uh, is uh, irreducible. And then I don't know if uh, my, the other lecturers are, have mentioned that, but I believe that we should add uh, the condition to be monic in the definition of irreducible. Okay? So whenever I say irreducible, I mean uh, monic in particular. So I, I take this, and the degree of f is n in such a way that um, the number of elements of f is p to the n. But then we just proven that this is, uh, uh, this is a splitting field for x power n to the n. So every element here, including alpha, is a, every element here, including alpha, is a root of the polynomial uh, x to the power p to the power n minus 1. So the simple fact mean, implies that f okay, is a divisor of x to the p to the n minus 1 minus x. So every reducible polynomial of degree n is a divisor of this. So if you like, this also implies that when you make the product of all polynomials, f irreducible, f, uh, the degree of f is n, this is a divisor of this polynomial. But you know what? Uh, this is already nice, right? But uh, I can write down even more divisors. So if uh, f is irreducible and um, d is its degree, and d is its degree, um, then um, what we just said that um, f divides x power p power d minus x. So, and uh, if, uh, if farther d divides n, this is a divisor of x power p power n minus 1. So, not only this is divisible by polynomials which are irreducible of degree n, but it's also divisible by those irreducible polynomials whose degree is a divisor of n. Okay? And uh, if you wonder why this is correct, I think, uh, why is this correct? I think uh, if, you, if you use the fact that uh, if A divides B, x to the A minus 1 divides x to the B minus 1, which is something we know from high school arithmetic, then uh, you apply this, and, uh, and um, this, you apply this with a equal d and uh, b equal n. And so on one hand, you get b to the p to the d minus 1 divides p to the n minus 1. And then you also deduce that x to the p to the d minus 1 minus 1 divides x to the p to the n minus 1 minus 1. And then you multiply everything by x, and you get x to the p to the d minus x divides x to the p to the n minus x. All right? So it's an iteration. So, so you have this. So let, let's uh, glue these two things together. I want to glue this remark and this remark. 
And then we have the following. So what, what it follows from these two remarks is the following, that if we make the product of all polynomials, these are irreducible. The degree of this polynomial is, uh, is a divisor of n, not only equal, but a divisor. This is a divisor of x power p power n minus x. Okay. And now, you know what happens, that these are actually equal. Not only this is a divisor of this, but also vice versa. OK? And, uh, and, and why are they equal? In fact, if uh, g is uh, irreducible and uh, uh, g divides x power p power n minus x. Then you know what we do? On one hand, we have the splitting field. And inside here, we have the stem field produced by g. So, and here we have a p. Right? A minus x, yes. Thank you. OK? So this is a field with p to the n elements, which is a vector space of uh, dimension n. So this degree is n. OK? And uh, this degree here is equal to the degree of g. Right? Because uh, every stem field is like that. So what we have here by the degree formula, which was also reviewed in the morning by Inda, is that uh, this degree divides this degree. So the degree of g divides n. So every irreducible factor of this guy is uh, one of these guys. OK? Is this enough to conclude that the two polynomials are the same? Yes, but. They would be the same if there, there, were, there wouldn't be any multiple factor. OK? So one last remark is uh, that we already remarked that x power p power n minus x has only simple roots, so only uh, simple factors. So we, we end up having this beautiful formula here, is that um, x power p power n minus x equals the product over all polynomials irreducible, and the degree of this polynomial divides n. So I just want to make an example. Maybe, maybe I'll do two examples. So uh, if we take x power 8 minus x, OK? So this is 8, 8 is 2 cubed, OK? So what, what, if we apply that formula here, is uh, 
This is the product of polynomials which are irreducible and degree that divide a three, right? So it's the product of the polynomials which are irreducible to degree one. And so how many, how many polynomials of degree one irreducible, well, they're all irreducible, how many polynomial monic of degree one do you think there are over FP? P, right? X plus alpha and alpha can have P values, right? So here we have X and X plus one. So I'm thinking at this as a polynomial over the field with two elements, right? So these are the two polynomials of degree one. Recall x plus one and x minus one are the same polynomial here. And then uh, I'm, I, I have space left for um, other polynomials. They are irreducible of degree three. And uh, they should uh, add up up to degree six. So how many polynomials I can place here? Two, right? Two polynomials of degree three, right? And so if you have a polynomial of degree three and you want it to be irreducible, well, this is equivalent to the fact that it has no roots, right? A polynomial of degree three is irreducible if and only if it doesn't have roots in the field, right? And so here, the polynomials on a degree, on a field with two elements, either there is the monomial and the coefficient is one, either there is no monomial and the coefficient is zero. So in order to be irreducible on a degree three, it should start for, with x cubed and it should end with one. And uh, since you want uh, one not to be a root, it has to have an odd number of terms, right? So here, here is uh, one polynomial of degree uh, three, which is irre irreducible. It doesn't have roots. And here's another one. And if you make the calculation, this is an identity, right? Okay, this is an example. But uh, should we uh, elaborate on this example? Yes, let's do it. So let's look at the, the degree on this side. The degree on this side is p to the n. And the degree on this side, the degree on this side is the sum of the degrees, right? So we have, uh, so let us elaborate. So we have p power n equals the sum of the degree of f of f irreducible degree of f divides n. Okay? And now let's write it in the, fol in the following way. So this is uh, the sum for d that divides n of d. And then here is the sum of ones, as many as uh, the number, the polynomials, irreducible, and the degree of f is d, right? I've just re written that thing in a different way. So if I call n sub d of p the number of um, polynomials, irreducible and uh, with degree d if I, I if I if I call this then I have the following also very beautiful formula which is the following The formula is the following, is that p power n is equal the sum for d dividing n of d and dp. Okay? We have this very nice formula. Okay? And um, 
for example, for example, what happens if uh, if n here is l is prime? What happens? So let's see what happens. What are the so if in, so here I have p power l, and so the divisor of l can only be one and l. So this is equal to n one plus l and l. So I am. So sometimes, I guess always, I'm just going to forget about the p. OK? So we know this is p. So we have that n l is equal to p power l minus p minus divided by l. OK? So this is a formula for the number of irreducible polynomials of degree l, when l is prime. Okay, an extremely useful formula. Okay, and uh, in general, in general, there is a formula. So, n sub n, the number of irreducible polynomials of degree n, can always be written in the following form: the sum for d dividing n of mu of d p power n over d. And now mu, mu is the Mabius function. And uh, it's a function that comes from elementary number theory. And uh, it's in the notes. You may, it's, all of this is very elementary. So this is an application of the so-called Mabius inversion formula. Very simple application, but uh, I, I don't want to uh, get into the definition of the Möbius function. The only thing that I would like to tell you is that there is an explicit formula like this, okay, using this uh, number theoretic function that I'm not going to find, but you will find in the book, okay. There is an exercise. The exercise is the following. The exercise uh, tells us this, that um, the number of uh, irreducible polynomials of degree n over p, this is always uh, less or equal than q power n over n, and bigger or equal than q power n over 2n. And this is a consequence of this formula. And um, so for those of you which are comfortable with this formula, I suggest you try this. Uh, not very difficult, but uh, so what is this telling us? This is telling us the order of magnitude, the order of magnitude of this uh, function, right? And uh, in particular, it's telling us that uh, this is always different from zero, right? So for any n and any p, there's always a polynomial which is reducible in fp, okay? Because this number is bigger than zero, right? And so every field can be realized as stem field. So I guess uh, this uh, uh, explains also uh, the controversy. Why am I using the name stem field? Because uh, all finite fields are stem fields. So uh, what's the use? Uh, I guess uh, what I really like is the stem, right? Because when you're working with the finite field, you always realize it through a polynomial, and having a special name for that polynomial that time is good. And so I use it stem, yes. Oh, sorry, not Q, P, sorry. I don't know why I switched to Q. I don't know, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the first application. And, um, and so I, I just give you a preview of the exercises that I'm going to solve in the training session.
Oh, by the way, on the, on the schedule, there was a training session today and also Friday. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, doing a training session today, as you realize, but um, I would like to do one tomorrow, okay? So tomorrow we'll do a training session, and I will copy BAS, so I will bring you uh, a sheet with uh, about 10 problems so that uh, you can work on them. <laughs> so. Sorry, why? why? And then you can work on them uh, for the first half hour, okay? Um, so, just to recap, so if, you're, if you want to put uh, uh, P and N, and inside you want to put, so, so 2, 3, 5, uh, 7, 11. <coughs> And here you take two, three, four, five, six. So fill this table, okay? So this is my contribution, one. And I guess uh, I can also do more. This is two. Okay, and then you, you do the rest, okay? But uh, you just need to use this, right? So this is the table, just to make sure that we, we are all together here. Table of the number of irreducible polynomial over fp of degree n. So this is what, what uh, should go into this table, OK? And uh, so next, sorry. I don't, I don't, I, I don't even see who is making the question. Yeah, but uh, so you want me to add an extra line here? No, but uh, I, I could add a one here, right? <laughs> All right, it was my two that really looked like a one. I, I, I agree with you, yes. All right. So. Another application, so another application of the discussion we made is uh, the so-called irredu irreducibility test. So I'm sure you've heard about all this um, attention that the primality tests um, have caused in recent years and their importance in cryptography and implementation of uh, various uh, crypto systems. Now, um, just uh, relatively recently, we learned how to do it in uh, polynomial time. Now, to check whether an irreducible polynomial is, um, uh, sorry, a polynomial with coefficient in a finite field is, irre is irreducible is a relatively much easier task, right? So. Suppose we take a polynomial here, and then uh, n is the degree of f, and uh, suppose that p to the n is large, whatever this means, right? So how do you check that this is irreducible? See. Sorry? Yes. So there is one polynomial irreducible of degree 2. 
over F2. And two irreducible polynomial of degree three over F2. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> You're always right, René. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back. So I guess uh, with an error correcting code that we could have traced the error. <laughs> so how do you check that uh, this uh, polynomial, so the question is the following, uh, or actually the task is the following, to check if uh, f has a factor of degree d, and this d better be smaller than n, otherwise certainly it's much easier as a task then we, we just compute the GCD between the polynomial and x power p power n minus x. OK? So this is the product of all polynomials of degree, uh, sorry, p power d. OK? So this is the, the product of all polynomials of degree uh, dividing d. In particular here, there are all polynomials of degree d. Okay? And when we do this uh, GCD, there are two possibilities, right? Here we get 1. So, and if we get 1, we mean means no factors. Or we get something which is different from 1. And the answer is yes. This is the factor, or a factor, let's say. OK? So it's enough to check to compute uh, this GCD, right? And this is the GCD of polynomials. And the GCD of polynomials can be done through extended Euclidean algorithm, exactly what, as we do it for integers, except we have to divide polynomials and take quotient and remainders I, I, iteratively, right? So very simple, right? Now one uh, remark that could be done is that uh, this polynomial here has a degree which is enormous, right? So after we do the first division, we might end up uh, just after the first division with the polynomial, which is not as simple as this. This is very sparse, right? It doesn't have any coefficient. But when you start doing it, Immediately, we have a polynomial which is too big, too many coefficients to handle, right? Because p power d is too large, OK? So uh, to compute it, there is a step 0. So step 0, which is before the extended uh, Euclidean algorithm to compute this GCD. And that step 0 is to compute x power d power n modulo f. OK? And now, so we compute this using a different method. And uh, there is a method that, that uh, we usually learn in uh, elementary algorithmic number theory. And this method, uh, so suppose that this is uh, x bar. So this is computed by the uh, repeated squaring algorithm, which is also very fast, right? And uh, it's also an algorithm that I'm not going to get into, but uh, you will learn it in uh, any, I guess, uh, algorithmic uh, something class. But then, once you do this, you observe that um, the GCD between 
this, and this is equal to the GCD of x bar minus x, and f, so the degree of x bar is more than the degree of f, so this is a immediately uh, a very, um, it's a GCD between polynomials which have uh, very small degrees. So if you take this idea, you repeat this over all possible d's up to n, n over 2, I guess, then you deduce from this an irreducibility test, which is polynomial in uh, p power n. Okay? So this is another application of this formula for the uh, number of irreducible polynomials. Okay, so there's uh, several other things that I would like to do, yes. Uh, another application is the following. So this is um, like a preview, a preview of uh, Galois theory, um, Galois correspondence theorem. Okay, which is um, a very important uh, in, uh, in the basic theorem. It's a theory which has uh, only one theorem, I think, uh, well, it was already mentioned. And I think the knowledge of the Galois correspondence theorem, uh, it's uh, a privilege only of mathematicians, usually. So this is very important. So um, if... Uh, if... Uh, um, we have a finite field which is an extension of FP. So here it's the first time I use this notation, but this is really, really standard. So FP power N indicates. A, a finite field with the p to the n elements. So you can use this notation where, where every time you don't need to specify the stem, you can use this notation. So if you consider this extension, then the lattice of uh, subfields of, uh, uh, of fp power n is um, isomorphic isomorphic uh, as lattice uh, to the one of the visors of uh, n. So wh what does this really mean? It means the following. So suppose we, you have 6, OK? And you want to write the, the lattice of divisors of 6. So the divisors of 6 are very simple because there's 2 as a divisor, 3 as a divisor, and then they have a common divisor, which is 1. And this is the end of the story, right? And now, exactly this lattice reproduces itself in the uh, subfield setting. So there is a reason for which I write it um, reversely. So the subfields of this are the following. There's a unique subfield uh, with p cubed elements. Then there is this, and there is a unique subfield of p squared elements. And now the reason for which I make it correspond 3 to 2 and 2 to 3 will become uh, clear in the Galois theory class. Okay? So 
this is the correspondence. And uh, uh, actually, once you do a bit more of Galois theory, it will be very simple to deduce it from the fact that the Galois group, which has already been mentioned, of uh, this extension of uh, finite fields, this Galois group is uh, isomorphic to a cyclic group with n elements. Okay, and um, this is actually the group generated by the Frobenius automorphism. So this stuff, I'm just putting it there, and um, you, you'll save it for next week or the next lectures in Galois theory. And uh, what's, uh, what is not difficult to prove is that uh, for every divisor of n, there is exactly one subfield which is between fp and fn. So let's do this. But of course, uh, this is a much more elegant way to state facts. So you know, rather than, uh, rather than telling you more things about this, which anyways are going to be explained in another course, I would like to mention another concept, which I find it's fun. So one or two other concepts, maybe one, since I only have five minutes. So, so uh, primitive polynomials. I would also like uh, to speak about normal polynomials on, uh, on Friday. So, okay, let's start with, uh, with those examples. So we had uh, fp of alpha, alpha squared is equal to 2, and the order of alpha here was 4, and then, sorry, f3, and then we had f3 of beta, beta square equal 1 plus beta, and the order of beta is equal to 8, okay? So we had these two examples, right? So in general, if uh, f is uh, irreducible, n it's its degree, then uh, once we do the, the stem field, then it remains defined uh, a number which I'm going to call E, which is the order of gamma. Okay? Which is the order of gamma when gamma is uh, in the multiplicative group of this field, right? So E is going to be a divisor of P power N minus 1. Okay? So in this case, we had that P squared minus 1 was uh, 9 minus 1, 8. So in this case, we had 8 itself. And in this case, we had 4. Okay? So E, e is also, is also um, called the order of f. So what is the order of a polynomial, which is not something very different from its degree, the order of an irreducible polynomial. I take uh, the stem field. I take uh, uh, the, the generator of the stem field, which is a root of the polynomial. I take its order in the multiplicative group, and I call that the order of the polynomial. And just by the way, uh, all roots have the same order, but uh, we'll, we'll go back to this, OK? So definition. Um, F is called primitive if uh, uh, the order of F, so I guess F uh, irreducible, eh? If the order of F is as big as possible, so it's P to the N minus 1. 
Okay. So this is the definition of primitive polynomial. Okay. So if you take uh, if you take uh, polynomials of degree two. So this is the last thing I'm going to say. If you take uh, polynomials of degree 2 over f3, before I was trying to convince you that uh, this number was 2, but actually uh, this number is uh, 3 squared minus 3 over 2, which means that this number is 9 minus 3. This number is 3. Uh, sorry. 3. 3. OK. <laughs> Sorry. So and uh, so these are this is one polynomial. Here's and uh, and this is order four. Then we add another polynomial. Sorry, this is not. And then here's another polynomial. So I guess it's not difficult to see that this is irreducible if and only if this is irreducible, right? Because uh, this is obtained by this just by replacing x with minus x. So I have these three polynomials, and these are all irreducible polynomials of degree 3. And now this is uh, non-primitive. And both of these are primitive. Exercise. So, proof show that. The number of primitive um, in FP of x degree equal to n. This number is equal to the Euler function of p power n minus 1 over n. We have this formula, okay? which is not very hard to verify. But uh, this is one of the exercises we're going to work on tomorrow. But I, I guess uh, phi of 8 is 4 divided by 2. No, sorry. Uh, 5 of, uh, so. Um, so three square, three square is eight. Uh, three square is nine minus one is eight. Five of eight is four. I should get two, eh? Oh yes, yes, yes. In fact, <laughs> so this is five of eight, which is uh, four. Four divided by two is two, and in fact, I have two primitive polynomials. Okay, so at least in this case it's correct. Okay, that's all I wanted to tell you. So let's enjoy the free afternoon, hoping that the weather will be nicer. Okay, thank you very much.